Now the first thing we need to do is to make a sketch. And so I've sketched the plane and the particle and marked in the acceleration which we found from the first part was 0.6 meters per second per second. Next I need to mark on the forces acting on the particle. We've got the weight of the particle which always acts downwards, mg. The mass is 0.8 kilograms so we've got 0.8 and then we've got times g, mg and the units will be newtons. You've got the normal contact force because the object's in contact with the surface and that acts perpendicularly to the surface and we'll call that R, R newtons. All right. Now because it's a rough slope there's going to be friction involved and friction always opposes motion so because this particle is sliding down the slope then friction must act in the opposite direction up the slope. So we'll mark that in as a force, the frictional force. Now because the particle is moving, friction must have reached a maximum, it is limiting and that value would now be mu r, mu r newtons. I'd also suggest that when you're doing problems on planes like this that you draw a dotted line like that and a dotted line like that, parallel and perpendicular to the plane. And always mark in this angle here and that angle is always the same as the angle of the plane. So that's going to be 30 degrees. Next we need to try and calculate mu. But to do that we'll need to know what r is. And so to get R, what I'm going to do is look at resolving perpendicular to the plane along this line here. So we'll resolve perpendicular to the plane, so we need to tell the reader that we're resolving, so we have the R. What direction are we going to resolve in and what direction are we going to take as positive? Well, I'm going to take away from the plane as being positive. So denote that with an arrow in that direction. So Considering all the forces now and how much they contribute to pushing or pulling in this direction. Well, the R first of all, all of that force contributes to pulling in this direction. Okay, so that's going to be R. As for mu R, well mu R is perpendicular to this line here, so this force has no effect in this direction. Now we look at the weight, 0.8 g newtons, and because this force is not on this line, then we need to think about the components of this force. There'll be one in this direction, and there'll be one in this direction. Now, the one in this direction contains the angle, 30 degrees and so when it contains the angle the force is always cosine. Okay? When it excludes the angle, that is when it's in this direction, it becomes 0.8g sine 30. So this one, 0.8g cos 30, this component, which we'll use later actually, is 0.8g sine 30. Okay, so we've got R and now we want this component, which is minus 0.8g cosine 30 degrees. It's minus because that force is in the opposite direction to R. And this is the resultant force, and this resultant force equals zero, because this particle relative to the plane does not lift off or go into the plane. It just remains in what we call relative equilibrium. Now if I rearrange this equation now I can get R. R would equal 0.8g cos 30. And if you work that out what you should find that you get is 6.7896 and so on newtons. I'm not going to round this up because I'm going to need this value 
in the next part of the solution. Because what I'm going to do now is look at motion in this direction parallel to the plane. Now because the particle is moving down the plane, it's sensible always to resolve in the direction of motion. So what I'm going to do now is resolve in the direction of motion that's down the plane. So taking down as positive. And if I do that, then the force acting down that comes from the weight is the component of the weight acting in this direction. Now I just said a short while ago that this force can be split into two components. One this way which contains the angle so that force there was 0.8 g cos 30 and then we've got this force which doesn't contain the angle of 30 degrees so it becomes sine 30. So it's 0.8 g sine 30 that acts down in that direction from the weight. That's 0.8 g sine 30 degrees. As for this reaction here, this contact force R, well it's perpendicular to the plane and so therefore has no effect in the downward direction. Now we move on to this force, the frictional force mu r, and all of this acts up the plane. So therefore, because it acts in the opposite direction to this, it will be minus mu r. So this is the resultant force, and the, because this is accelerating, the resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we can say that this equals the mass, which is 0.8 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration of 0.6 meters per second per second. So if I rearrange this for mu r, I therefore have mu r equals, and then I would simply have 0.8 g sine 30 degrees, and then I would subtract 0.8 times 0 0.6. 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.48. So I could just simply write that as minus 0 0.48. Now if I number this equation 1, I can say sub 1 into equation 2. This equation here being number 2. So what I've got then is that mu multiplied by r, which is 6.7896 and so on, is equal to this value here, 0.8g sine 30 minus 0.48. And to get mu, obviously all I need to do is to divide this value by 6.7896. So We'll just write that in and divide it by 6.7896 and so on. And if you do this on your calculator, what you should find you get is 0 0.5066 and so on, which rounded to, say, three significant figures is going to be 0 0.507. There's no units for the coefficient of friction, so we just leave it like that. Say that we've rounded it up to three significant figures, so I'll just write 3SF for short. OK, so I hope you've been able to follow that, and that brings us nicely then to the end of this part of the question.